Hello to all my Site 2013 friends. In this video, I'm going to show you the back end of my PowerPoint presentation that I created for my session, and then show what I did to convert that into an infographic. And so to begin, I want to show you a few tips and tricks with uh, PowerPoint if you plan on using this software in order to create infographics. Before I begin, you can see that my standard presentation, I just used the standard 10, and, 10 inches by seven and a half in order to create this presentation. Another way that you could do that is you can actually go to the design tab and the page setup, and then you can create a custom height for your presentation. You can keep the 10 inches wide and increase it to about 30 height, um, or you could do it as much as about 56, I think, is the limit that PowerPoint lets you play with. Now you can see when you do that, it makes the slide thumbnail and the outline tab pretty much useless. So you can close that down, and then you can build all of your interactions and elements right on the slide. And then when you're finished with that, then you could save it as a PNG or a JPEG file. That's not the approach that I took for this presentation, just because this is not only an infographic that I created, but it's also an hour long conference presentation. And so I chose to make it, even though it is an infographic, feel more like a slideshow. So first of all, I wanted to mention that in terms of background, you should keep it simple as, as much as possible. You want these elements and interactions to really jump off the page instead of being lost in the noisy background. And so I took a color swatch sample from my institution style guide and created something that's just kind of a generic color scheme. And then with the intro slide, I want it to have a little bit of a gradient up at the top. And so in order to create that effect, I introduced a shape and placed it right on the top of the slide here in the slide master view. So to do that, I inserted, it, it was kind of a crescent looking shape right here. And then I just rotated that and I changed the gradient properties so that it was more in line with, with my institution's uh, color scheme. And I placed, uh, I placed that right at the top there. And so it gives it a little bit of a distinct look and feel compared to the other slides, which have the solid background. This has a little bit of a gradient, a crescent gradient to start us out with. And uh, for the end slide, typically at the end, you'll want to cite all of your references and resources. And a lot of times that's done in a box. You can play around with that if you want to create some kind of shadow effect. You can go to the format shape and, and you can create a, an effect let me try a couple ways you could do it is introduce a drop shadow to the front of it that would give you a little bit of a little bit more depth right there kind of a, a distinction or you could even do an, an inner shadow and pull this up here and so it, that would make it look like you know the depth the other way and you can play around with those settings as well you can increase the distance uh, make it a little bit more blurry transparent perhaps you can see a little bit of shadow on the sides and on the bottom there, and if that's a problem, then you can just go ahead and expand the sides a little bit. And then you'll want to be mindful of the text right here. And so um, you can take care of that, click on the properties on the in the text box, and then you'll just want to increase the, increase the margins to make sure that that text stays on the page. And then you'd have a nice little drop shadow within the box. So to, to preview that, I'm going to press Control and Slideshow to get a little preview button here. Then you can see a little bit of depth right there. Not much. I'm going to go ahead and keep mine keep mine simple like that. And so I do have distinct title and end slides right there. The rest of them are pretty standard. I have titles that, that vary from left to right. And you can see in my layout that I title that title and content. And then I have a right aligned one, which is something I created in the master view uh, specific for that. Another trick that I wanted to point out, this is something I used twice in this presentation. You can see how I want these QR codes to be on the slide, but they're big enough that I want them to, to take up two different slides. And so in order to demonstrate how I did that, I'm going to insert not a QR code, but just a, a basic shape. I'll do an arrow right here. And here's an arrow that I want, I'm going to want that to spill over onto the next slide. And so my trick for doing that, I'm going to double click this so that I can Actually, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to copy that, delete it, and then special paste it as an image. Uh, once it's an image, I can place it where I want it. Double click, and I'm going to crop that image. And I'm going to crop it so that it's even right with the edge of the slide right there. And once I have that, I'm going to copy that, jump to my other slide, paste it, 
and then I'm going to I'm holding shift down so that it maintains so that it, when I move it it goes in a straight line and then I'm gonna move it right to the top edge right there double click again so I get this format and I'm gonna crop it only this time I'm going to extend it to right about there and so the effect is that it starts on one slide and it goes to the next slide and for an animation um, I'm going to to create an animation and then preview this press control and slideshow and you can see that the image ends up being uh, seamless in that sense and so that's one trick that you can start an image on one slide and it'll go to another slide which is something that I do later on over here when I created a big road and put it onto two different slides and so that's a, a quick trip for a quick tip I'm sorry for working with images on the slide that need to span multiple slides another thing you might notice on on some of my slides here I have some images off the screen that these are images that didn't quite make the final cut necessarily I think I was tinkering around with Albert Einstein none of this will be visible once you either publish the once you are in the slideshow view the audience cannot see whatever is not on the slide and then once you publish it as a PNG or a JPEG the only thing that gets published is the content that's on the slide and so with that mentality you have a much larger canvas to work with than just what's on the what's going to be on the screen you can have images all around here you can play with them and modify them don't be afraid don't uh, reduce yourself to working with only a 10 by 7 and a half slide because you don't need to do that so with that I believe that we're ready to publish this thing I'll go ahead and save this save it as not a, a PowerPoint but I'm gonna save it as a PNG I'll save this as demo and it's gonna ask do you want to save just the slide that you're on or all of the slides I want to save every single slide so it's gonna publish my entire project as a PNG and that's available in the folder that I specified and I'm gonna hop over to this resource iPixie and we're gonna start editing um, I'm going to upload some photos and the photos that I want to upload are here in the folder that it created a demo photo folder for me so I'm going to highlight all of those and open those up and so it numbers it slide 1, 2, 3 through 15 it's a 15 slide thing so now I'm going to go into collage I have 15 slides and they need to be vertical by default this is 1, 2, 3, 4, a 2 by 2 what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this five tall so I can put five slides at a time onto this thing. I'm going to decrease the spacing to zero. What the spacing does, if I put an image in there to start out with, I'm going to place a few of these in there. Close that out. Now when I increase the spacing, you can see what that does. It creates a lot of black space as kind of a frame or a mat between the pictures. What I want, I want that to be zero. Roundness, also if you increase it, it cuts off the corners a little bit, so I want that roundness to be absolutely zero. And then for proportions, I found that 57 by 43 is the best proportion. Now when I go down, you can see that it makes everything kind of skinny. It makes it 36 width, 64 height. When you do it too wide, then you can see the height isn't enough and there's too much width. So you want to find that perfect space where the slide doesn't get cut off. And so I found that to be about probably 57 by 43 is about the best. I'm going to switch the quality to high quality and I'm going to say done. And now I have the first leg of my infographic set to go. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to save it as PNG because I prefer working with PNG. And I'm going to name that 1 just for the sake of ease. And I'll save it in the same folder where I published my slides. And I'm going to um, close that photo now. I'm going to go ahead and create the do this again for the next um, 10 slides. And I'll come back when I'm done with that. Okay, so I went ahead and finished up that um, collage. Now I have you can see I have one, two, and three are the results of that. The first fifteen or the first five slides, the second five, and then the last five is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open those right here, return to collage, and I'm gonna create my final collage. 
which is um, going to be 3 by 3 right there. I'm going to reduce the spacing to 0, the roundness to, to nothing. I'm not going to play with the proportions quite yet. So instead, I'm going to add the images. And I can see that this is the first one. Um, this will be the second 5, and then this will be the third 5. I'll change that to high. Um, and then I'm going to have to play with the proportions, but this time, since I'm not working with 5, 10 by 7.5 slides, I'm working with with 10 by, um, you know, that's 5, 7.5, so that's some 40. So instead of going up to 57 by 43, I'm going to have to back way down until I get to the point where I can see everything um, on the slides which ends up being incidentally as low as the proportions can go which is 20 by 80. Now this isn't necessarily a good thing. This this happens to be a particularly long infographic. Usually you'll do about half that much but since the proportions are um, so extreme I'm gonna actually lose a lot of real estate. It's not gonna it's gonna sacrifice width for the sake that it's so long. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. When I actually create the infographic for the presentation I'm giving at site, then I'm going to do that in Photoshop instead of this. But I can at least put together the five at a time, the first five, second five, and third five slides using this program. And then I just have to use another program to add them since they're so long. But you probably won't be creating infographics quite that long. And so when I save it, I'll, I'll go ahead and save it as final. And I'll save that as a PNG. It's compressed, and I'll save it um, right there. <clears throat> and close that out. And now we'll take a look at that. Go to recent places, demo, and we can see the final thing right here. Let me put this within our within our view, and you can see the final infographic. It's at 15%. If I put it at 100%. You can see that's 100%. Now that's not so great because it's not very wide. This is 100% width because it had to accommodate for all of the height. You can see my other ones, the number three, the width is just fine. This is completely readable. But for the, the final one, again, you had to sacrifice width for height to fit everything onto the screen. Not something you have to worry about if you use a more robust photo editing software like Illustrator or Photoshop, which is uh, what I will do. Now you can see, um, if you remember that one slide where the QR codes were broken up, now the QR codes are intact. And if you were to scan that with your cell phone, then you would find that the QR codes are all intact. And if I jump to the other slide, you can see the the road that was broken up and separated by two different PowerPoint slides is all relatively seamless at this point. And so this is how you can get started. Use the tools that you have. Use free sources online in order to create your own infographics.